Oh my goodness. <laughs> that is so big. If there's a fish that swims, I need to catch it. Fresh water, salt water, from a boat, from a kayak, or from four inches of ice. I thrive off the new experiences fishing gives me. I'm an ex-fishing guide turned videographer calling Lake of the Woods, Ontario my home. I'm Jay Siemens, and this is The Canadian Angle. Oliver Nye is no stranger to big bass. He grew up in the heart of the giant trout-eating largemouth bass of California. I've been following Oliver's big bass exploits throughout the USA for a number of years. A 10 pound largemouth is a fish of a lifetime for any largemouth angler. Well, Oliver has conservatively been in the boat for over 40 of these fish of a lifetimes, with a mind boggling 17 pounder to his credit. This summer we met up halfway between Ontario and California to talk everything bass fishing and hopefully put some big Wisconsin bass in the boat. Mr. Oliver Nye, how are you doing? Top of the afternoon boys. Well, they let me out of Canada. I'm in Wisconsin. Of all places, chasing Big Bass with Mr. Big Bass Dreams, Oliver. It's actually our first time fishing together. We've been like social media friends for a couple of years talking about getting on the water together and now it's happening. So Oliver, he fishes for everything, but I would say you've logged the most hours bass fishing. It more. is Big Bass Dreams. It is Big Bass Dreams. Oliver got his start bass fishing nowhere close to Wisconsin in California, probably the most pressured bass in the world. Arguably. Yeah. Arguably. I, coming from Canada, probably have the least pressured bass in the world. We met in the middle in Wisconsin. Oliver's been down here fishing for a couple weeks and we're gonna compare and contrast, share some stories, and hopefully catch a big bass. We're gonna talk about what it takes to create a big bass fishery and some things to look for. And the bonus would be showing you guys one of those. What, what are we fishing for? What, what type of lake is this really? An oligotrophic lake. Deep and clear. Deep, clear. Uh, surprisingly full of forage. There's a ton of crayfish in here. There's a ton of bait fish. There's ciscos. There's a big food supply. And that you said is probably the biggest thing to create big bass. Every time. Yeah. Every time. It's, it's a crucial component of the puzzle to create a trophy bass fishery. And we have that here. And we've got a, an interesting dynamic in that it's a low density population of smallmouth but that gives them the, the freedom and the room to get big on that abundant food source. Uh, so I'm hoping we can run into one to three of these special, special tanks. tanks. They're built, they're built special here. And I, I think like the largey fishing that Oliver's done in California, it's like you're never fishing for a lot of bites. And that's, mm -mm. that's the common denominator for a lot of these really, really big fish. If you have a lake that is loaded with fish, they're probably gonna be a little more stunted and a bigger fish might be tough, but it doesn't really matter the size of the lake. We're not fishing a big lake. It doesn't need to be a big lake. Nope. It just needs to have the right food and just the right biomass. We're going finesse, small baits. It's clear water. We got a sunny day, so we're gonna have to work for them. But Oliver says seven, maybe eight pounders live here. So that's- Sevens for sure. So if you've been in the bass fishing world, in the smallmouth world for the last couple of years, you've probably heard of this. This is a hair jig, black hair jig. It is the definition of a finesse bait. And it doesn't have a lot of thump. It doesn't have a kick of a big swim bait. And it just glides through the water. It looks like a leech. That's what you're trying to mimic, a leech or a bug swimming through the water. Even in dirty water, it's not just a clear water thing. The smallmouth can just feel it tracking. So right now, Oliver's got a little bit of, you've got a bigger kind of a glide bait or a? No, I've actually what do you got, got right a little finesse bait? swim bait on an Okashira screw head. Yeah, so right now, we're hoping we're gonna visibly see some fish. Oliver says you just see these submarines floating around but that's what Oliver's using. We're both going small. These big fish are not always after a big meal, a big Cisco. So for people that aren't familiar with fishing in California where Oliver started, like, what are the regulations? What is it like, you can't just go fishing all the time? Yeah, typically our lakes don't open. Some of them not until like half an hour to an hour after sunrise. So you're missing prime time. So you're missing the low light prime time. Yeah. Uh, you got to be off the water, uh, usually by sunset, but some of them are like 4 or 6 p.m. depending on time of year. So you're missing the twilight bite. Yep. And you're not allowed to night fish, especially in a boat, <laughs> unless it's through uh, an organized bass tournament. And can you, and you can't fish near some docks, right? Marinas, they sometimes? Oh, yeah. This, this whole dynamic that we're seeing here. That you like, can't do that in California? This doesn't exist. Really? You, that no one owns any property on our lakes. <laughs> Well, we were about how many hours in, Oliver? Three? Three, three hours. Three hours in, 
and we've seen probably half a dozen smallmouth, which is what I was told, what I was expecting. But this is like the mindset of trophy fishing, fishing these clear lakes. We're fishing for one or two bites. If we wanted to go catch 20, 30 fish, I'm sure Oliver could bring us to a different lake, but we're looking for a big old Midwest Smalley. So we're going to, I mean, we're seeing the fish, Oliver's on them. We're fishing a lot of these gradual flats with scattered rocks, a couple docks. Like this lake is a big bowl, so there's not a ton of structure and any little piece can definitely hold them, but it's going to happen. So big wood piles that you can't see. Oh, yeah. the, you can see one right in front of the dock. Yep. And then there's another one like right here. Oh, what did I bump? Uh, there's a gazillion rock bass that live on it oh, and yeah. perch, but the smallies on it are on it too. Yeah. I feel like I might've bumped a piece of wood or something. Hey, there it is. <laughs> it's the not even a rock piece. bass. We're on the board. Oliver promised. He said, you know what? You're not going to get many bites, but they're going to be big. But it'll be at least a six or seven. <laughs> I didn't say pounds. More yeah, like he, inches right now. Six or seven inches. There you go. The Thank you, Oliver. You're welcome. All right, what's the game plan? Are you just gonna drop out and catch one on command? Man, uh, we, we've come offshore a little bit. We're fishing deeper than I normally like to. We're sitting in about 10 feet of water, right on a break where it gets shallow. And there's some artificial fish cribs out here. Did I lost the fish? Oh no, I got one. Soaked up? That's great. First flip out there with the drop shot uh, with the little leech imitation. We spent a lot of time shallow and now we've seen a couple deep. Right. A little bit later in the day, uh, what was working earlier this week stopped working. So we had to switch gears and this is not one of the giants that I'm so proud of here but it's a good fish. Oh, look at that. Hey, we're upgrading. It is an upgrade. Right there, perfect hook set in the top of the roof, roof of the mouth. Lost my bait though, unfortunately, but look at this beautiful That's built, northern it's built good. Smalley. Good job, hey. Thanks buddy. Just incremental upgrades. Yeah, yeah. We get to live that experience with each upgrade. Thanks, you. Look how beautiful that fish is. Mm. All right, we see a deeper one. I'm gonna try to toss right on. Still have a bit of chop on the water. That's him. Got him. Got him. We had to work for this one. It's oh. been a long day. We moved out deeper. I'm gonna try to net it off the back corner here. That is just a giant smallie. This is one of my biggest <laughs> smallies ever. Welcome oh to my. Wisconsin, my friend. You were not joking. It's not easy here, brother, but every <sighs> bite is worth it. Oh man, we, yeah, we worked. <laughs> this thing is a submarine. It came right to the boat and then now it's just been bulldogging. Finesse fishing, light line, little hair jig, and this fish, is just a whale. Yeah, just take your time, you're good, baby. We're out in open water, 15 foot of water. That deeper zone seems to be holding them today. Oh gosh, look at that thing. Oh, we got it, buddy. Big smallmouth dreams. That's a, that's a big, fat smallie. You are not lying, they're tall around here. They are tall, man, they are built a special way. Let's see this beautiful thing. That tiny little hair jig, which looked <laughs> like a leech. And that is, like, look how tall that fish is. He is eating healthy. As Oliver said, there's endless forage in here. But we're gonna get this fish in the water, give him a drink, and then we're gonna weigh him. How big? Four and three quarter. Four and three quarter, nice. Yeah, four pounds, 12 ounces. Wow, you weren't lying about the average size here. Yeah, it. this is not a very long fish but just tall. Let me show it to you Hold them up to me, yeah. yeah. That is such a beautiful fish. Dude, I'm so thankful 
pretty we, we stuck it out and like you said it's not a lot of bites you were not uh, no exaggeration yeah. there all right thanks honey appreciate you you gotta tickle them in the head sometimes let them know there she goes back to the depths <sighs> yes we got it done man some of these lakes are no take some of these lakes are like one fish over 18 but there's really no no there's no reason to keep a, a small mouth over 18 inches no uh, fiberglass replicas are the way to go uh, these things are way more valuable swimming in our lakes passing on those genetics yeah pulling on people's drags than hanging up on someone's exactly uh, wall or den so, exactly awesome man good Thank job you. brother good job yeah <laughs> stay tuned boys it's just getting started. <laughs> so you grew up largey fishing majority of the time? Yeah, I didn't have an option. That's that's pretty much what we had in Southern California. Uh, very few lakes that had smallmouth in them and they were, they were too far out of my range as a, as a youngster. Yeah, I and mean, now you're traveling North America chasing them. What What's what's the attraction for you to smallmouth? They, they've always seemed exotic to me, as crazy as that sounds, because they weren't easily accessible to us. So I think it's human nature, right? We want things that we don't have access to. So a smallmouth represented this whole other fish and style of fishing in different regions of the continent, and not even just the country. Obviously, there's a ton of amazing smallmouth fishing in Canada. And it was a way for me to feel like I was connecting with some of the the pioneers of the fishing media scene back in the 90s, right? I can relate to an Al Lidner in Minnesota catching um, all these crazy fish that we don't have in California. And the smallmouth was kind of one of them. So it was a way for me to, to be in touch with this whole other world that I knew existed, yeah. but I'd never seen before with my own oh, eyes. Oh, now it brings you to places you would never you know, we're, we're yeah. far from California right now. We're, we're a long way. I think it's a 36 hour straight shot home if I were to jump in the, <laughs> in the tundra now and just beeline it. It's been an amazing five years touring uh, the upper stretches of the continent, searching for the biggest smallmouth I can find. And uh, we've been pretty successful. We've, we've caught a lot of big fish. So you always got to aim high and dream big, uh, whether you're throwing a 12 inch swim bait or a three inch swim bait. Yeah, to be honest, man, like as a Californian largemouth fisher, fisherman, as I came into the north on the first season chasing big smallies, I was like, dude, these things are dumb. <laughs> it's just there's so many lakes like where you're at. You're, I mean, you don't have nearly the number of lakes. Your population density is through the roof. Through the roof. And you have to be so good at fishing. That's the thing in Canada. I'm like, I'm not that good at fishing. I just have really, really good lakes. And then that's why... When Americans come up and fish in Canada, it's so good to them because it's like they have to, you have to work harder for your fish on a lot of these fisheries in the States. So I feel like this is kind of the middle ground here. Like it's not quite dumb Canadian fish, but they also grow big with being a little further south. And mm -hmm. Later in the afternoon, we decided to switch gears and try for largemouth. We traveled down a windy creek system that led us to a new lake, home to dark water and big largemouth. Here in the Midwest, it's actually quite common to be able to uh, pass from one lake to another to another to another. There's actually four lakes on this chain and all uniquely different. We're going from a deep, clear lake to a eutrophic lake, which is going to be shallow, dark water, a lot more sediment, like a tannic brown water, which means it's going to warm up faster. Um, obviously a lot more weed growth. And that is just in general, a little more favorable for largemouth, which we're going to now. Even now, if you look down, you can see that water's just getting a little more stained and instantly we're gonna have to change how we're fishing. Obviously switching to largies already, we're gonna have to change how we're fishing, but just getting to the back here, you can see lily pads on either side and we're probably gonna be beefing everything up. You said heavy line and maybe some frogs? Yeah, hopefully some frog fishing, a swim jig, uh, something with a little bit of vibration and water displacement, maybe spinner bait. We're gonna be targeting shallow cover, shallow grass, pads, and some lay down wood. And one of my favorite ways to target largemouth in and around that shallow cover is with a swim jig. 
Uh, we've got it on a pretty stout rod, seven foot, a fast taper, pretty high speed reel. I've got a pretty light jig head here. It's a quarter ounce bait. This is a unique swim jig with a little bit of flash, kind of an underspin take on a traditional swim jig with a four inch swim bait trailer. And we're gonna swim this in and around that shallow cover, grass edges, shade lines, uh, parallel with the trees, through the gaps, but it comes through cover beautifully because of that weed guard. Uh, it's got a high fishability factor and fish eat it. It's a great way to cover water when you're looking for largemouth bass. The other way we're gonna target them is by fishing a topwater weedless frog. And as you can see here, you can see some of the bite marks uh, on this particular frog, but it is such an effective way to present a bait where any other open hooked bait is just gonna get snagged. You can fire this over grass, over pads, uh, in and around wood. It's a really versatile bait. Uh, this one walks really well, so once you actually get clear of that heavy cover, you can still generate bites by making this frog walk the dog. You can spit, you can chug it. Really versatile bait. And frankly, one of my favorite ways to catch largemouth bass. All right, my boy Oliver is using the frog, which is definitely a little more weedless and a little easier to fish. The blow ups are just amazing, but I'm gonna do the swim jig and kind of work these edges maybe a little bit deeper. Yeah, these fish, I think they, I, Oliver might say different than me, but I don't think they necessarily roam as much as those smallmouth in the clear water. I think they're gonna kind of be living in this vicinity, but we'll see. I think that's accurate. They just, they definitely don't roam as much as a smallmouth, but they roam yeah. a little bit. Is that a muskie? We got a muskie. Hey! And just adjust the sure camera. Did. Nice fish. My yeah. first Wisconsin muskie. <laughs> Little muskies are beautiful. This guy's skinny. That's probably the smallest muskie I've ever caught. <laughs> In the back, swampy bay, and we got us a muskie. Have you eaten larges? Oh yeah. yeah and, they're not bad. No, they're fine. Small enough, they're good too. They just, uh, I think there's uh, a hypersensitivity to the idea of eating bass, which I think is silly. Yeah. Uh, there needs to be responsible and uh, sustainable harvest on some of these lakes. I mean, it's the same dynamic with anything we've yeah. talked about. You want a trophy fishery? Have less fish. Yeah. You got a lake that, you know, you're gonna win the tournament with eight to 10 pounds, that's a problem. Yeah. Come on. Oh, there we go. Oh, hey. I think it's the right time. the right kind? Yay! Hey. <laughs> Your good luck. There's a chance. Look at that beautiful thing. Yes. Nice. That thing is a That's tank. That's good. That's a good one. That was bigger than I thought. That thing is a tank. All right. Oliver made it happen. He put me on it. Look at that nice big Wisconsin largey using this swim jig. We had to grind it out, but we got a beautiful fish. That's a little bit skinny, but probably pushing around three pounds. Nothing wrong with that. We did it. Good job, bud. Thank you. I'm pumped for you. So the beautiful thing about bass fishing is you can often replicate your success by establishing these little patterns. And I'm, I, I feel pretty good, man. This is historically uh, great for the styles of, of lures that we're fishing. You're fishing a swim jig with a blade. Uh, spinner bait should get bit here. These are bulkier baits than we're throwing for the Right, bigger smallies. presence. Uh, they tend to be more aggressive than a smallmouth and more willing to take a big, uh, yeah. big bait overall. Right now it's more so than, than finessing them, it's just finding them, right? Yeah. It's just something they can feel, something big in your heavy line. Was that 30, 40 pound braid? It might even be uh, heavier. This is probably 60 pound braid. 60 pound braid. You're trying yeah. to just winch that fish out when you get oh, absolutely. them. Absolutely. Like I'm throwing a frog around these lay downs here. And if we get a, a big Northern Wisconsin largemouth, four to six pounder. You want to haul them up? I want to get them out of that yeah. and land it. Like how are there, how's there not a bass on that? Oh, that's just, oh, there's one. There you go. Oh no. Oh yeah, oh. you got him. Nice. <laughs> Oh. oh! Well, they've not come easy today, 
but we've got a couple of sconces and largies. Oh, come on. I just missed one. Oliver just had a fish blow up on his frog. All right, this is it. The last spot of my time in Wisconsin. Huge shout out to Mr. Oliver Nye for hosting. And uh, he put me on a great big smallmouth. Hey man, it's been a blast, bro. It's been good. Thanks for coming out. This is not the last time Oliver and I are fishing together. Next time, hopefully you'll see Oliver in Canada with me. But it's been good, learned a lot about big bass. We compared some notes on my bass fishing in Canada compared to his bass fishing in the States. And uh, I think the moral of the story is bass fishing is a lot of fun and trophy fishing is always a lot of work. I, I've been on the, some of the best fisheries the best time of year. It is always work and you can never take a big bite for granted.